Um, question is, like, first of all, like, how we were inspired to, like, care about climate change and get involved in the climate movement. So you can start. Yeah, so I think, it's, I think it's a lot different for both of us. For me, it was really, like, animals and my connection with my cat. And I think just hearing about how all a bunch of species around the world were, you, you know, like, the, their, their lives have been put in danger ahead of our lives. Which I think is really bad because they're innocent and, and they haven't done any cause climate change in a major way. So I think it's really bad that those who haven't caused it um, are feeling the effects. And we're seeing that in the global south as well. Too. I got involved. I guess there was never a time in my life where I wasn't terrified of climate change, but I really, things really picked up for me um, after the 2016 election um, where I was just like, oh crap, like, Obama wasn't good on climate, but that was like at least something, but then Trump was just a whole other level of horrible, so I was like, okay, we probably need to do something about this. Um, and then like, I guess we're also like talking about the global like climate movement, like where we fit in that and kind of just like the global youth climate movement and like how we see it like today. Um, I mean, you and I, like, we both kind of were doing this before it, like, blew up. So it's been, like, quite the experience to see, like, the way that the climate movement has shifted in the short <clears throat> um, time frame from when Zero Hour was started to later. Yeah, and it's interesting to see how, like, how exclusive the climate movement was to, like, only certain people. And now they're, like, trying to get youth involved. And I think it's really nice that... We, um, we kind of helped with that and that there are now a bunch of youth movement and creating their own movement space. Yeah. Um, I remember when we started Zero Hour, it was like back in 2017 and there was like, I mean, there was definitely like grassroots organizers and like so many people doing like a lot of good work. But in terms of like in the national eye of just like the general climate conversation, um, we, we felt pretty alone and just like we were begging people to get involved and like people didn't want to give us resources people didn't want to give us money people didn't want to give us the time of day media coverage nothing um but we like scrounged that up and like built it from like the bottom up like we were just like a group of like scrappy kids and we like had nothing no clout no money nothing and we just like kind of pulled it together and i remember like the youth climate march on july 21st it was just like we were all like wet rats in the rain <laughs> because it was raining so much um, at the march and we were just like wet little rats and I was just like what impact is this going to have we're here marching the pouring rain and then just like the feedback that we got after of just like all of these young people from all around the world who've been inspired um, is truly incredible and just seeing like the footage of like the marches from all over the world yeah it took a lot of work there was so much work that went into it yeah yeah it's one thing I think for us, like, we had to build the momentum on our own because it didn't already exist. So we had to, like, hand build the momentum for an entire year. Because let's say we, we came up with the idea in the summer of 2017. 2017. Summer 2017. Summer 2017. Whole year of working our butts off um, for this and just, like, building the momentum. And now it's just, like, has a life of its own. Like, it's its own thing now it's just kind of keep going it just keeps going yeah yeah um it's crazy how things have like blown up like i remember when greta first messaged us like when they were she was just like about, i think it was back in like september and she was like oh i'm doing this strike and i'm like oh cool and she's like yeah i'm really inspired by you guys like zero hour you guys are doing amazing work like i um I sent you an email, I want to work with you. And now like just the amount that like the climate strikes have just blown up and just like, now we're just a part of like this massive global community. And it kind of feels nice that like we helped build that and like a bunch of scrappy kids in the US just like working our butts off, like helped build the foundations for this like crazy big movement. And I think what's also interesting to point out is that a lot of us were like environmental junkies, you know, we were just kind of like, Chilling day to day, high school students, and then we just kind of decided to do this. You know, climate wasn't like our thing for like 
like a lot of us had just like recently learned about climate change and it was just like we just decided to go for it yeah but i think it really shows that anybody can can be a it's not like you have to know a bunch of things or scientists or yeah for so long the, the general consensus was just like um oh you're a you have to be like a scientist have a phd if you're really into like science if that's your thing and i'm not like i believe the science but i don't like stem like as something that I like to do. Um, and so at first it was kind of like unappealing to me and I was like more drawn to like social justice issues. But like, as we worked on this, we realized like social justice is so intertwined with climate justice that like this movement is for everyone. And so now young people, and it's amazing to especially see like young women of color all around the world mobilizing. Um, we're realizing that climate justice is intertwined with our own justice for our people. Climate justice is social justice. Yes. Even more justice. A lot of justice. All of the justices. I always like to think like climate justice is ultimate justice. Yeah, it is. Because if you think about it, if we get to the roots of climate change, like the actual roots, then we kind of end up solving all our other like problems if you think about it. Because like climate change is, is literally the greatest thing <laughs> of our time. It's the one thing that's accumulated from every other bad thing that we've done. Yeah, a lot of people like to think of climate change as, like, this thing that's separate from, like, like, if we're talking about how we want to, like, recategorize climate change, like, they think of, like, climate change here, and but it's reality, the, the grand culmination of all of these other issues, like, it's, like, their grand climax of suckiness, where it's, it's like, capitalism, colonialism, racism, patriarchy, and all these other issues have just conglomerated into one big end-of-the-world scenario, um, which is super scary, but... I feel like it's kind of, if we take, if we do this right, like if we solve it right, not within the same framework of the systems of oppression that caused it, but like if we solve it right, then we end up like also addressing all those other issues. But if we don't, then we're screwed. Definitely, definitely. And I, I think that's been the biggest issue right now that, that that's why the, the movement has been so slow for a long time is that everyone keeps talking. Planet, oh, like the earth is gonna die, the planet's gonna and then in turn we die but like it's really not like that like the earth is like a floating thing in space like it'll it'll be okay it's it's life on earth you know all the soil all the all the plants on the ground beneath our feet um all the plants all the animals and us but like like we're we're putting ourselves in danger it's not like we're putting this this planet and yes like we're putting life on planet in danger not yet. I think that's why everyone's been so disconnected with the shoes. Like, we keep saying, oh, Earth, Earth. Earth Day, yeah. yeah, and it's just like, oh, it's separate. Like, it's the environment. It's, like, separate. And it's like, you know, we're literally, like, living in the Earth. If the Earth is not okay, we will definitely not be okay. I think people just need to make those connections more often. Yeah, also this, this thing that bothers me is just kind of the way that um, for so long the climate movement has been trying to solve this issue within the same rules that caused it. So like, in your, what I always like to say is that Einstein defines insanity as um, trying to solve an issue with the same thinking that caused it. And we're trying to colonize our way out of the climate crisis with like cap and trade and like other countries like going into like communities and saying this is what's best for you when the community knows it's best for them um and so we're trying to like colonize out of something caused by colonialism and cap especially this is what irks me when we're trying to like capitalism our way out of climate change something directly caused by capitalism like all these like greenwashing like new products and oh cap and trade is the solution oh let's like buy our way out of this with like more capitalism when will we learn <laughs> I, don't know. I think one of the biggest solutions honestly is working with nature because a lot of people that have been really successful are the people that like the forest, barren lands, and and you know like work with animals and, and the people that work hand on hand with other life, like other species, they have a lot of success in like carbon sequestering and different ways to reduce emissions. Do you think technology can help us through this crisis? I think so. I, I don't think there's any way we can get through it without technology because technology is such a big part of our life. But I like, okay. there's just no way, like, civilization, I feel like, could progress without technology. Like, I, I feel like no one would accept 
Yeah, and there's like a lot of new like solar, wind, geothermal, like technology. Um, but I think one thing, um, one thing that really irks me is like this whole geoengineering thing where people think that we can like literally engineer and technology the face of the earth out of the climate crisis and like all of these wacky like building seawalls and like aerosol, like all these like pretty much chemically inject like it's this whole thing where, where I talk to people and they're like super like they're like those like couch liberals where they're just like kind of liberal but they're just kind of like oh we will Silicon Valley our way out of this we don't have to change it like we can capitalism our way out of this by like geoengineering the planet and like reconstructing it and they think that technology is going to get us so far and we can just we're going to be fine because someone's going to invent like some invention that's going to save us which is so fun. Yeah people have to stop waiting for other people to do things especially since we only have an amount of time left. And it's really like, I think technology would be like, is going to be really useful for like renewable energy in terms of like sustainability, like sustainable housing development. But um, other than that, I don't think we should, yeah, we shouldn't use technology to further capitalism. That would be interesting to see yeah that'd be shooting ourselves the industrial revolution like like i feel the industrial revolution really set us on a pace for climate destruction and so i don't think we should have another like, big boom of technology unless we really consider the side effects of that. and then another question is just like are we in touch with greta and have we messaged tweeted and connected with her yes yes we have um, yeah, I think to talk about further about that, yeah, she was partially inspired by the Zero Hour movement, partially inspired by March for Our Lives, and she has her own, like, I don't want to put words in her mouth, like, she knows it. But, like, since before the strikes took off, we've been in touch with her and working. Um, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's been great to see the European movement take off. Um, however, one thing that has been irking me is just kind of like the, um, the colonial mindset of just like, so there's like this whole colonial trend of, um, like the Americas learning from Europe right and like Europe colonizing like the Americas and like us like especially like in Colombia where my mom's from like there's a lot of pride and just like oh we have European influence um, and the media has been making it seem like another like another like the United States is just catching on and like Latin America and like all of these other like former colonized countries are like um, were just catching on to this European movement when in reality it was the other way around and that doesn't really annoy me in terms of like the zero hour movement because like we're fairly new as well but like in terms of the standing rock kids like I, who have like been literally risking their lives like putting their bodies on the line and like my friends in Colombia who are like defending the Amazon rainforest like also putting their bodies and lives on the line I feel like there needs to be more attention towards that and like towards what's happening in like former colonized countries um because right now there's this narrative of just like europe is the only one who's like doing amazing and then the rest of us are just kind of like i don't know did i make that clear or not i don't know yeah yeah you did and and like indigenous people you know indigenous people have been fighting for for centuries i believe and like they've been fighting for for humans to respect the land for so long and we didn't listen and just kind of like everywhere like people of color in the global south like everyone's been fighting for a long time no one just really picks up for a while yeah i think that in terms of like how we can best um best combat this issue i think that a lot more resources and just funding and just attention and media because all the media and funding and attention tends to go to the grass tops like the people at the top um organizations were doing big national awareness work and that work is important like, i'm not trashing anyone in the climate movement i'm not dissing anyone like everyone is doing important work but the real the money needs to be going to the people who are literally on the front lines planting trees stopping pipelines like physically doing the things and they're the ones who make the most impact but get the least funding so if they can do so much with like barely any money imagine what they could do if we like actually funded them and like funded standing rock and like funded um there's currently people um fighting bayou bridge pipeline to be away in, in louisiana um 
So, uh, um, a guy named Mark came and spoke in the event I was at the other day, and he was talking about how every time if you donate like one dollar to the Bayou Bridge um, water protectors, if you donate one dollar to him, then they, that takes away thirty dollars from fossil fuel corporations. So, you know, the more money you donate that takes away from fossil fuel corporations. So, so there's a lot that the frontline community and, and grassroots organizers are doing on the ground, and we need more of that. We need to support them. There are so many like grassroots organizers who have been doing this work longer than us, and like keep doing this work, but like they do it because they're like so centralized in their communities. It's not like something flashy for the media to cover, and people tend to want to. It's easier. I don't blame people. Like when you Google something, the top Google search of like environmental activism or like organizations are going to be like the big greens, which are fine, but that's what people are going to donate to first. But I would encourage people if you want to like really help fight the climate crisis to like do some more digging like on the internet in your community and like find the websites, social media. Oftentimes, what the smaller the organization, the less likely it's going to have like a website and more like a Facebook page or something. But like find them and like it be like a monthly donor, even just like five dollars a month to like a um, like because because grassroots organizations need consistent contribution so if you like the best way you can help is go like find a real grassroots organization doing the real work and then like become a monthly donor even if it's just like five ten dollars a month like that makes a huge impact yeah it, it really does and a lot of people it's hard to take individual climate action but you know organizations, these groups of frontline communities they can create so much change with multiple people you know working really hard so by supporting them, they're supporting them in action. They're part. They're for helping. Yeah. Well, this has been a nice discussion. It was great talking to you. Um, so farewell and say hi to your cat for me. Okay. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you too.